Welcome to this part of the module 4 where we will be looking at different types of patterns including the fill pattern, the curve driven, the table driven and the sketch driven pattern. To start off with the fill pattern, uh, let's go ahead and create a new part file sketch circle in the front plane and let's assign the dimension of uh, 200 millimeters on the circle and then let's go to features extrude it by 5 millimeters and then click on the check mark to finish up this uh, cylindrical thin disk the fill pattern is typically used in the examples where we want to fill up the whole surface with a uh, small uh, feature that we don't want to create it using a, either a linear or a circular pattern. We, we basically want to use something like a perforation uh, in the uh, sheet metal part. So in that case, uh, the fill pattern becomes uh, extremely useful. Before we use the fill pattern example here, uh, what we want to do is click on this uh, front face and sketch a center line going from the uh, circle and uh, let's snap it in the uh, vertical direction to make it fully defined and I'm going to come out of the sketching mode and now let's go to the fill pattern which you can find it under the list of all the patterns uh, on the command manager so let's select the fill pattern and we need to select the planar curves or faces uh, or even we can select the sketches uh, for filling the boundary. So in this case I'm going to select uh, the face where I want to use the uh, pattern to fill it up. There are different layouts available. One is the perforation, the circular, the square uh, or the polygonal. Let's take a look at uh, how it fills out with the perforation option. And if we scroll down below here, we can even use this option to create a seed cut. So we don't need to really create another feature beforehand. Uh, we can use the fill pattern. So we can make use of the circle as a seed cut or the square or the diamond shaped or even the polygon. Uh, let's use the polygon and let's restrict uh, ourselves to a hexagon. Some dimensions for the seed cut we can obviously manage it from here. I want to make sure that I'm looking at the full preview before I can go ahead and create the fill pattern. These are some of the patterns uh, parameters for deciding the layout of the pattern as we can choose from one of these options and the numbers for them. One last thing we need to do is click on the pattern direction and click on this line, center line that we had created in order to decide the pattern direction that can be filled up. We can notice that since we've created the perforation, it uh, kind of uh, you know fills it out uh, on this filled surface. If we had created the uh, circular one, you can notice the pattern changes into the circular option and then, you know, according to whatever the option we set, the fill pattern gets applied on that face. So let's say we use the perforation and instead of uh, 60 degrees, if I use, uh, let's say, uh, 30 degrees, then you can notice the angle between the uh, perforation and uh, the, uh, the direction that we had decided uh, becomes 30 degrees. So we can play around with these numbers. We can even uh, uh, change the margin also, which is set at two millimeters. So if we set it at, let's say, uh, zero millimeter, depending on how many instances we want to create, uh, some of the instances even may touch the boundary or we can adjust that uh, distance as well. Number of instances are automatically counted based on what the parameters that we have set. For example, instance spacing is about 28 millimeters. Let's say we make it as 20 millimeters. Then the number of instances can be increased because now the spacing has reduced. So we can play around with these numbers. We can you know, play with this uh, uh, pattern layouts as well in order to 
uh, fill it up uh, with uh, whatever the seed curd that we have decided to do it. If we have a existing feature created on the face that we want to pattern, we can use that as well. Once we click on the check mark, we can see the perforations created on the plate and that's how the fill pattern works. Now let's take a look at the curve driven pattern. I'm going to go ahead and start off with a new part file. For the curve driven pattern, unlike the linear direction or the circular direction, we need to create a solid model uh, that has irregular uh, boundaries. For example, if I want to create um, a simple part, uh, I'm going to start off with a straight line and then uh, use the uh, different options for the curve. Uh, I'm going to again extend this uh, with a straight line and then add again the three-point curve. The important thing in the curve driven pattern is that uh, whatever the uh, sketch that we create as a closed loop, it must be tangential at its connecting points. So again, if I uh, want to create a, a three-point curve here, and then connect it uh, with a straight line, something like this. And now I'm going to go ahead and use the relations to uh, make it tangential. Remember that this is the very important step in the curve-driven uh, pattern. Okay, once the uh, sketch is uh, finalized, we can obviously you know use the dimensions to make it fully defined. And once we extrude it, let's extrude it by five millimeters click OK to make this uh, solid model. Now I'm going to create one instance here. So I'm going to sketch on this and let's use the uh, circle and assign uh, the uh, dimensions to that uh, circle. And also we can uh, you know, make that as fully defined uh, as uh, with respect to the relations as we want to make it. Then I will use the extrude cut option and use the through all option to cut this hole. So now let's go to the curve driven pattern and we need to select the direction for the pattern. Since we already have the extrude uh, sketch uh, ready, we can just simply go ahead and select it. So let's go to the boss extrude one and then click on the uh, sketch and we can notice the pattern is already created um, in the uh, manner as it's indicated on the graphics area. It is possible that if you're doing it for the first time, uh, the default option could be selected as the transform curve and you may not be able to see the pattern created correctly on your uh, graphic screen. So you need to change that to the offset curve. And obviously with the selection of number of instances and whether you want it equal spacing or not, you know, we can set these parameters just like in the case of linear or circular pattern. We can also choose the instances to skip. For example, I can make some of the instances uh, go away from the pattern as we feel and then use these parameters to uh, create the curve driven pattern. Click on the check mark and the pattern is created along the curve boundary. I'm going to un uh, I'm going to suppress this and also suppress the extrude um, cut extrude let me suppress that as well and what I'm going to do now is instead of a circular sketch uh, I will be creating a uh, square cross 
section of sketch. So once I create uh, this particular instance, I can obviously orient it uh, the way I want it for uh, aligning purposes and for the demonstration purposes let me uh, align this uh, with respect to this uh, particular straight edge. Once it gets aligned with one of the edges I'm again going to go to features use the extrude cut and then cut through all so let's say this is the instance that we want to pattern along the boundary. Now notice the orientation as how the uh, seed pattern is, uh, the seed instance is created. Let's go to the curve driven pattern. Again, just like in the previous case, uh, let's use the uh, sketch that we used for, uh, for the boss extrude one so that the number of instances can be created I'm going to be using let's say only 10 instances this time with equal spacing and we have to now be careful about what alignment method as we want to use. We will come back to this uh, once we select the features and faces. So I want to use this particular feature and notice how all the features are aligned or all the instances are aligned with respect to the parent feature and that is because we have the option of aligned to seed uh, is clicked. If we click on tangent to the curve then all the instances are going to be created uh, with the orientation as tangent uh, to the curve. The next example that we are going to be looking at is the table driven pattern. So let's go ahead and start a new part file. I'm going to select the front plane to sketch a rectangular cross section and then extrude it to make a solid model. On the surface of the uh, rectangular uh, cross section that we just created, uh, I'm going to create a circular feature and extrude it to make it another boss extrude feature. Now let us say we want to create multiple instances of the boss extrude 2 feature using the table driven pattern. So in the table driven pattern before we start assigning the multiple instances first you know we can create a coordinate system. So let's go to the reference geometry and click on the coordinate system and let's select one of the vertex points on the uh, rectangular box here and let's make a coordinate system. I'm going to click OK to create this coordinate system with x-axis and the y-axis along the plane of the uh, front face of the rectangular block. So once we've created the coordinate system then let's go to uh, this uh, drop down arrow click on it and then use the table driven pattern. A pop up window will appear where we can either read a file the external file for the x and y coordinates or we can just simply manually input the coordinate points here. <coughs> so under the coordinate system we can select this coordinate system 1 then we can either select the bodies to copy or features or faces to copy. In this case I need to select features to copy and select the uh, boss extrude 2 feature to copy and create multiple instances. I'm going to click on full preview option. The first instance which is the point 0 is already selected as 27.92 millimeters and 119.04 millimeters for my problem here, I can click on the next instance and if I type in the number, let's say 20 millimeters 
and for the y-axis if I say 40 millimeters you can create multiple instances for example um, I'm going to say 40 millimeters for the X or let's use uh, a slightly higher number let's say 60 millimeters and 40 millimeters and accordingly then we can keep on selecting the multiple instances So I've adjusted some of these values here to separate these multiple instances from one another and then accordingly based on this table we can create these multiple instances. Once I click OK uh, you can notice the multiple instances are created on that face. Let's take a look at the sketch driven pattern. For the sketch driven pattern, I'm going to select uh, this face one more time and then under the sketch, I'm going to select uh, some of the points at the exact location where I want to create uh, the instances of the parent object. Once I've created all these points under the same sketch, I'm going to come out of the sketching mode and choose the a sketch driven pattern. Sketch 3 is automatically selected of all these points that we just generated and then for the features if I click on the boss extrude feature that I want to make the multiple copies of and then click OK so that way I can create multiple instances using the sketch driven pattern. So there are so many different ways of creating the patterns, linear pattern, the circular patterns as well as uh, a little bit advanced patterns such as the table driven, curve driven, sketch driven or even the fill pattern. All these pattern types are extremely useful to create solid models in the SOLIDWORKS. Thanks for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.